well, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Chelsea Benner, and I work for the Department of Ecology out of the Central Regional Office in Yakima. Um, I'm the Voluntary Stewardship Program Coordinator for, uh, for Ecology. Today, I'm going to give a quick overview of the program and provide some resources for those of you that are interested in learning more or getting involved. Um, go ahead and skip forward for me. The Voluntary Stewardship Program, or more commonly known as VSP, offers counties and agricultural landowners farm-friendly options for protecting fragile natural resources, um, also referred to as critical areas, in places where agricultural activities are conducted. The VSP vision is to protect critical areas and improve agricultural viability. Go ahead and skip forward for me. Thank you. The critical areas identified in the VSP statute include wetlands, frequently flooded areas, aquifer recharge areas, geologically hazardous areas, and last but not least, fish and wildlife habitat conservation areas. Many farms across the state have agricultural activities that intersect with one or more of these critical areas. Go ahead and skip forward for me. So here's a little bit of history about the program. Um, prior to the creation of VSP, the main tool for counties to ensure protection of critical areas on agricultural lands was through regulation, um, most commonly known as critical area ordinances. Um, VSP was created to give counties and producers the option to use locally driven watershed plans and incentive-based tools to protect critical areas instead of the regulations. Implementation of VSP began in 2011 when counties were given the choice to opt in or out of the program. Once a county chose to opt in, they were tasked with creating a plan specific to the county and its agricultural and critical area needs and priorities. Each participating county implements their own plan. Local conservation districts, in conjunction with a county work group, head up implementation by um, providing guidance to producers. Using the 2011 critical area um, baseline and the 2011 agricultural practices baseline, progress is tracked with goals and benchmarks that have been identified in the county's VSP plan. Individual landowners and producers have the opportunity to create a confidential individual stewardship plan. Um, those plans help identify um, best management practices um, that could help improve agriculture viability for the farm or um, for the producer, and it also helps identify opportunities for critical area protections. The county, is, uh, the county is required to report their progress on a five-year cycle um, to the Washington State Conservation Commission. Um, that The first reporting cycle was actually just completed in 2021. So if anybody's interested, um, all of those reports are um, up and viewable. Go ahead and skip forward for me. So this is a map showing the 27 counties that participate in VSP. Um, currently, there are no opportunities for the counties who chose not to opt in to participate. Go ahead and skip forward. So as the individual plans and locations of project and data um, is all confidential, um, I can't share where these were specifically done, but I quickly wanted to share some pictures of projects done that included riparian plantings. Um, as well as some agricultural best management practices, um, such as fencing and some stock water access. So here's um, a few before and after photos. Go ahead and switch forward for a second one. And these are all in Washington state. Okay, go ahead and skip forward for me. So to date, um, funds allocated to VSP through legislature um, have been used for implementation and administration of the program. So VSP on the ground projects are generally funded through outside cost share programs or a combination. Um, but that being said, um, a little bit of exciting news is that um, the Washington State Conservation Commission has been given a significant chunk of funding to use in the upcoming biennium for VSP that has not been previously available. Um, the commission is currently working on the funding guidelines and logistics for those funds. 
So um, down the road, there may be money available for um, some on the ground projects funded through VSP, which is super exciting. Um, because these funds are available specifically uh, for the next biennium, we should know more very soon about how the commission is considering to use those funds. Um, so again, if you're interested, um, that's coming right down the pipeline. Um, there's lots of resources out there for more information on VSP. One of the best is the Washington State Conservation Commission's webpage, which is the link you see here on my slide. Um, it includes history, policy guidance, um, information for each county involved in VSP. This would be the location if you're interested in those reports, those five-year um, progress reports. This is where you could find those. Um, if you are interested in learning more about getting involved in your local program, uh, your local program, the best way to actually do that is contact your local conservation district. Um, if you're not comfortable reaching out blindly to them, um, I'm more than happy to help connect you with the appropriate contact if you would pr prefer to reach out to me. Go ahead and skip forward. Oh, perfect. Thank you for putting that in the chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> So that's VSP in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to discuss them during our question and answer time at the end of the session. Um, and again, if anyone's interested, I'm available to help you get involved with your local program. Thank you all so much.